Jersey, where we find Dr. Rosalind Akombe. She is or was a commissioner with the IEBC up until this morning when we heard on the BBC <coughs> that she had f left the IEBC and taken off for America. Dr. Akombe, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Dr. Akombe? Jeff, I can hear bits of you, okay. not everything, but I can hear bits of you. All right, we'll try and do this uh, as quietly as um, quickly as we can. So we hear on the BBC, yeah, we hear on the BBC you've suddenly left. The question I'm wondering is, it seemed very calculated that you waited a week before the elections for you to take off. You know, Jeff, this is not a decision that I made without agony. This is a decision that I agonized over and thought through it and realized that as much as I could stay there and try to make things or change things from inside, there was no room to do that. You may have heard today Chairman Chebukati speak out, speak about the frustration that he himself has been facing and calling on the commission to be impartial and calling on political actors to be serious and save the country. So these are things that I wish I could have been able to solve internally, but I realized that with only three votes that the chairman had, we could not be able to move that agenda forward anymore. All right, so let me ask you this, doctor. Next Thursday's election, you have basically said that there's no way it can be free, fair, or credible. Do you stand by those words? You know, Jeff, organizing an election is not just making available the ballot papers. It's not just about having making the ballot boxes available. You know, what we did on August 8 was a fairly credible process. What we are heading towards is not one, because the environment has changed. The way in which we are operating has changed. The indictments made to us, made, made by the Supreme Court, especially related to the transmission of technology that we have not addressed. There have been questions raised regarding our own staff that we have not been able to deal with. Chairman Chebukati's password was used more than 9,000 times. The staff that were involved in that, the director that was in charge of doing that, nothing has happened, nothing has changed. So basically what I am saying is that, yes, we can proceed and have an election on the 26th of October, but it will not be a credible election. It will not be an election that meets the expectations of the Supreme Court as, as set out, nor meets the basic standards of what you could call a free, fair and credible election. At the same time, Doctor, you taking off and uh, going, ending up where you are now, isn't that a little, for lack of a better word, disingenuous? Because you, were as, you went to do a, um, inspect the printing in uh, Dubai uh, for the election papers, and then you took off for New York. It, it's a little disingenuous, for lack of a better word. I like your choice of words, Jeff, but what I want to do is I'm using this opportunity to speak out, to speak out things that I have been speaking out in the boardroom without any, any difference, any significant difference, to be the voice of those many, many, many staff in the field who have written to me and said, Madam, you have spoken out for us, to be able to bring some sense and sanity in what is going on and saying, look, we cannot just have an election for the sake of it. We have to have a credible election. We have to solve the political problems we have in the country. We have to sort this out in a way that brings back electoral integrity in our processes. Yes, I am aware of all the names that will be used to describe me. I am aware of all the propaganda that will be out there. But my mother and father taught me to be a person who stands for the truth, whether that truth is going to lead you to be called a whip, whether that truth is going to be called you to be, to, be, to be given names, you just have to stand for it. And that is what I have done. You know, Jeff, I could have arrived here 
I'm not done anything. I could have left the country and become silent. I'm not raise anything. I'm not say anything and say that I left on medical grounds or I left because I, you know, but I chose not to do that. I chose to come out and speak for those who would want to say those things. But because of what happened to their own colleague, uh, you know, in the last election, because of the brutal murder that happened to our colleague Christmas Sunday, they cannot speak. That is the reality. And so I have been privileged to be in a position whereby I can be able to speak without the same concerns that I would have had if I was in the country. Okay, if I was to ask you, doctor, are you ever planning to come back home? I would love to come back to my home. That's where I was brought up. That is where I was born. That is a place that gave me uh, the education that I have and the personality that I have. It is the place I would love to come back to. And that is why I'm pleading today. You know, when I'm speaking out, I'm pleading and saying, let's not let that beautiful country collapse. Our leaders need to come up and sit down around the table and solve the political problems that we have there. We have a beautiful country. We have a country that has a lot of potential. Let's sit down. We can solve these problems. We have sorted them before. And we can be able to sort them and take the appeal that Chairman Chibukati has put out today and move forward with it in a manner that will help the country be better off than where we are currently. Doctor, if I could ask you real quick, um, you said on August the 8th, we, you all conducted a pretty fair and credible election, right? I mean, I have, I have stood by what we did on the 8th of August. It was a fairly credible process that we had put forward. Okay. I believe that uh, it reflects the will of the Kenyan people, largely. If there were any misnomers that happened, if there were irregularities that happened, as the Supreme Court said, these are things that we could have been able to fix. These are things that we had been given a second chance by the Kenyan pe people to be able to fix. But we've not, we've not lived up to that call. We've not lived up to that opportunity that was given to us to be able to deliver a credible election on the 26th of October. At the same time, you have been extremely critical of Chairman Wafula Chebukati. Very critical of I his... Uh, chairmanship, if you will. You think he's... I, I, have, I have actually not been critical of Chairman Chibukati. I have said that Chairman Chibukati has shown a lot of leadership. That Chairman Chibukati has been, you know, the voice of reason. He means well for the country. And that is why I'm supporting what he's doing. And that's why I'm supporting the statements that he has made today. The appeal that he has made today. I have no reason to question the leadership of Chairman Chibukati. I have never questioned it at any point. I have stood with him at times when all the other commissioners did not and i will continue supporting him from wherever i am and if he resigns between now and thursday uh, well that is a decision for him to make it is his own decision and whatever decision he takes i'll fully support him because he means well for that country how do you deal with claims doctor that you were leading for nasa Look, Jeff, I'm one of the only commissioners who's had the advantage of getting, uh, if you can call it an advantage, of getting bloggers attacking me and claiming that I am a Jubilee Mall, and others attacking me and claiming that I am an Asa Mall, depending on what I have said on that day. So I have said on many occasions I'm an impartial person. I did not come there to take sides. I came there to do my job to try and avert the 2007-2008 situation. And I will continue being such an advocate. If speaking that truth will make me be called a jubilee mall, so be it. If speaking that truth will make me be called a, a NASA mall, so be it. But we have to speak up the truth. We have to say what is going on and find solutions to, the, to a very different situation we have in the country. But one in which the Kenyan people are resilient enough to be able to address and deal with. And if someone asks you or says that um, you choreographed your entire exit to coincide just a week before the elections, what do you say? Look, there are times when your integrity comes first. And for me, I reached that point once I did my visit to the various counties in the country. And I came back, I gave my report. I had hoped that this would bring some sort of sanity and sobriety within the commission. That did not work. 
Mine is a call, an appeal again, the swing that the chairman has met today. But let's come around the table and solve the political problem that we have. An election cannot solve the problem. The election that we are planning as it's done on the 26th of October cannot solve the problems we face as a country. I again, you know, listened very carefully to His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta's statement today. His appeal for prayers, that's exactly the kind of uh, atmosphere we need. That is the kind of... Um, you know, leadership we need to be able to come around and seek for solutions around the table, whether it's through prayer or whether it's coming together in a dialogue and addressing the situation that we have in the country. And you think you're better off being outside the tent than inside? I would have loved to stay inside the tent if I knew that there's something that I could do differently. If I, if I didn't have to wait for plenary meetings, to be able to vote. I tried and I realized that if we continue the way we are, if I continue being in there, I was not being helpful. I was not being, I was not, I was feeling in a space that could be filled by any other Kenyan to go and vote. If it is only about contributing along a vote line, I'm sure somebody can be found to fill that space. That is not my training. My training is to solve problems. My training is to find solutions to problems. I realized that I could no longer be able to do that within the commission, and that is why I had to bail out of it at this point. Tari, when you left JKIA heading to Dubai, did you know you were going to resign? And at what point did you actually resign? In Dubai, uh, when you got to New York, what point? You know, Jeff, you, you, you must be aware that uh, around the 15th, 16th of August, I had been sent uh, by the chairman for a meeting in New York. And at that point, I, I, it was an official meeting. I was going on an official meeting. I was held at the airport. No explanation has ever been provided to me up to this point. So when I made my decision, when I was in Dubai, I decided that I wanted to move on because I knew that I would not be able to do my resignation letter in Nairobi and be able to leave because this had happened to me before. So this was an opportunity for me to, to be able to use it to explain what is going on in the commission with the hope that the media, the business community, the religious leaders would realize that it is important it, you, that it is important to really, really, really address what is going on in the country right now. Yeah. And those ballot papers you were going to supervise in Dubai, who did you leave that task with, if I may ask? Well, the, 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 the commission has several people. I was not the only commissioner in, uh, traveling to Dubai. There were several commissioners. Uh, there was an, an extra commissioner there, and there were competent staff who would be able to handle that. Last question, Dr. Eric. Your honest opinion on your views on the IABC? I'm sorry, Jeff, I didn't hear your question. Your honest opinion on what, you know, what's the solution to the IEBC moving forward? You know, Jeff, I'll be very frank with you. What we have is a problem in which you have an institution that has two centers of power. It has a, a, a secretariat that is pretty powerful, that has, its, that, that has the responsibility for managing the entire processes. You have a commission that uh, is made up of commissioners and the chairman that has the responsibility of setting policy, but not really the implementation. So we, need, we are to reform the institution in a proper way. We need to put those two together. But also, we have allowed politicians into our boardroom. The plenary is managed by politicians. It is important that we clean that up. We have a real commission that is able to manage its own operations without fear or favor. So unless we address those concerns and unless we accept that there is a problem and we start dealing with that problem, then we won't solve it. But denying that we have a problem, denying that there are divisions, denying that they are, they, you know, that the boardroom or the commission is managed by certain politicians, we'll be lying to ourselves. We'll not be fixing the problem that we have. But for now, what I really believe is important is a dialogue, is to get around the table and resolve the political problems, because that is what we have ahead of us. It is a political problem. Final, final question. Best case, worst case scenario, uh, October 26 going forward. I'm an optimist. I, I, even in a situation like this, you know, when in a difficult situation like I find myself, I'm still an optimist. I still believe 
that there will be a possibility of having a dialogue, of being able to resolve the problems before the 26th of October. I would not want us to go into an election on the 26th of October that we already know is, 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 is having issues. And the chairman himself fell short of saying that. But by describing all the things that have made it difficult for him to, to do what he wants to do as a chairman, it already reflects to you the kind of election we expect to have on the 26th of October. Dr. Roslyn Akombe. Thank you. Come Thank back you home very soon. much. Come back home soon, okay? We need all hands on deck.